this is the Lenovo P12 with the matte screen. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying having a good look around it at the minute, I must admit. It is, uh, one of you commented, it does look all kind of fancy and it is a really impressive screen. I'm going to get up on OneNote because I'm going to be using mostly the Microsoft Cloud, the Microsoft suite of apps on this. I'm going to try my best to use this seamlessly between work and home. This is my personal account, OneNote, but I'm also I have my badged I come out of this PC mode here, it's this way. I have my badged work mode apps all ready to go as well in a little folder on my desk here. So far, I've been pleased with it. It is a matte screen tablet. It's an Android tablet with a reasonably powerful Dimensity processor. Sure, it doesn't come close to the iPad power of the new M4 chips or anything like that, but you know, it is good enough for an Android tablet, barring a few little power sort of, uh, you know, if you're a power user, it can't do things like, for instance, it can't cast itself directly by USB-C to an external display. So I'm wondering how much of a kind of PC replacement it can be. Can it do some of those kind of PC things? I've been generally using it in this nice, what is called PC mode, this kind of desktop simulation type of mode. Pricing Nicodem asks, well, uh, just for the unit, you're talking somewhere uh, in the mid 300s. And then if you wanted to add the pen, well, it, this gets bundled in about 500 um, along with a keyboard case as well. I did go ahead and get myself a keyboard case as well. Other things about it though, the pen is Bluetooth enabled and it isn't, um, it is not Wacom EMR, which I think lets it down, but it does have a button which brings up this little contextual menu and you can click this and you can use it as a remote control for things like taking photos like the S Pen does. So it's a bit like the S Pen in that kind of respect. And you can switch between pen and remote control. And you've got some like quick access things here that come up. Like for instance, go straight into the little note taking app that they have, which is the sort of built in one. I am obviously using, currently I'm using OneNote here. One drawback of OneNote is you have to be on the internet all the time. So for quick notes, I probably still will refer to that. And the pen does other things as well. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question, Walker. What use case would you recommend? Well, I'm going to really use it as my little Microsoft machine. So I'm going to be using Microsoft Word on here. I'm going to be using OneNote. I'm going to actually be using my school PowerPoints. I'm going to see if I can use the kind of screen share app with the Promethean boards at school and actually work on it um, for or a sort of display and presentation mode. because so I've really enjoyed teaching uh, like that with the iPad a good few years back. So we will see. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into its keyboard case because as I say, if you're wanting it to be a bit of a PC replacement, then a keyboard case is a good shout. The keyboard case though, is not all that cheap. 130 pounds is quite a lot, isn't it? And I was a bit surprised at how kind of plasticky it, fe it, was, it felt and really like how heavy it is. I know it's got to have this kickstand at the back, okay, so that it can stand up into its kind of PC mode, but it's really quite heavy. So you go ahead and put this thing, and you get this lovely kind of slender, it's really quite nice and thin actually. It's not as thin as it kind of pretends to be because it's got this big bit of glass protruding out the top, but it's actually quite an attractive design. And then you pop it in here, and all of a sudden, it's an absolute chunky beast. So I'm a bit disappointed and it's quite heavy now as well. It's really quite heavy now and that's a bit of a disappointment. And it's got a case, a space for the pen, but it's kind of still open and I, that's still gonna get knocked off in your bag. You know, it's a bit harder, but it isn't kind of, you know, I would prefer one of those little, you know, that bend off at the back and it goes underneath. Again, a little bit like it is on the Lenovo Smart Paper, the way the pen is in a little garage that's well safe in your bag. Then it is quite nice though, that you can actually go ahead and pop it into its keyboard case like that. And then it can stand up like so. And I kind of like the fact that now you've got something where you can take the bottom of the keyboard case off. You can't use it with Bluetooth to the case, unfortunately. But you can take the bottom of the case off and you can hold it like a tablet and then just snap that on really quickly. And then you're typing again. And it does default to go into this PC mode, which is really quite nice actually, because now it really does behave like you've got Windows. 
even with like keyboard shortcuts. Oh, Word doesn't support split screen on Android. Gosh, how about that? It really does feel in most cases <laughs> that I've had, that I've used so far, apart from Word apparently, crikey. And I don't know if that means, can you not even do a pop out window from Word? Perhaps you can't. Then in most cases, it does feel generally like a sort of PC like experience apart from Word, which is a real nuisance. That's going to really hinder my enjoyment of Word as well. So you can see you've got like maximize buttons like what you'd be used to on a computer. So the use case, you know, you can really use it like a normal computer. And I just want to try this as well. Once it's in its keyboard case, there's no more magnets, so there's no reason why it should. One thing about cases is they often can, if they're magnetically attached, like the smart paper is, then you can often interrupt the handwriting as well. But I don't think that's going to be the case here, so you shouldn't have any issue with using the handwriting. You can see, um, I don't know if you're observing that, but the kind of auto brightness and auto color balance is also quite cool as well. I've tended to run this in the kind of low blue light mode, the kind of eye comfort mode, as you would expect from someone like me. One thing you can do as well, you can't rotate it in this PC mode. So if I go back into sort of Android, Android operating system mode, you can also Right, this way around, <laughs> there's one issue with this if you're right-handed, because as you see, when I write now, I cover up the camera and hence I cover up the um, light sensor. So the automatic brightness doesn't seem to be doing here, but I did notice it doing the other day. When you write in this mode, you're covering up this sensor and it actually dims the screen, which is a bit frustrating to say the least. There's lots of different use cases really, aren't there? For writing it's good, but for if you're looking for a tool for professional artists, that's the probably that's the one it isn't because this pen stylus is probably in third place in terms of the quality for drawing. Although I did quite enjoy doing that. We can go ahead and have a quick look at sketchbook. You can do write in box like this, which works most of the time. <laughs> and normally you can just write everywhere, which is mostly okay. It doesn't seem to want to play because the keyboard case I think is attached. So let's see if I just detach the keyboard case. Can I show that? You can generally do write everywhere with this, but you have to avoid, as I've shown a couple of times now, palm rejection. Yeah, there we go. So now write in sketchbook. I don't know why it's doing that either. That's the first time I've ever noticed it do that. But you have to sort of make sure you put the pen down first. There you are, I don't know, it's doing this weird thing with with these lines here. I've never seen it do that before. I'm gonna just avoid that. And that works okay, but as you can see, it's a little bit temperamental. So as I say, yeah, that use a use Wacom EMR type tablet or use an Apple Pencil if you're a professional kind of tool. I wouldn't say it was good enough for that. Now something I always check, I always download Kinemaster because it does a little kind of check on the, on the specs. It does a little check on how powerful the processor is. And it says how many streams of different quality of video can it do? And yeah, it can do up to three streams of 4K video, which is actually quite good. Now compared to like the other media techs, I've tried the Helios G99, it, that can't even do one 4K. So it's a 3K screen on here, but it's powerful enough to actually drive and, and decode 4K video, which is good actually. So you could actually use it for some like video editing and, I, and that's something that I will try as I go as well. So I like using things like, like uh, this for video editing. It does have a fingerprint sensor. It does also have face recognition with the camera as you would expect. Okay, now let's see if I can get it to actually perform and actually write something in here. I wanted to show you briefly sketchbook, didn't I? Yeah. There we go. So it's doing okay now. Yeah, generally getting about with that and doing little bits of text like that is okay. This is a great drawing app, sketchbook. You know, and you can have quite a lot of fun here actually. It's generally quite good for sketching and you can use it like any Android tablet. And generally you've got, you know, you can see it's slightly behind the pen at all times. And the, well, the Apple Pencil is definitely quicker than that, as is the Wacom EMR. And Cute Maxi does say, yeah, I do, I absolutely agree. Why would you use, so this is, you say, AES 2.0, is it? It's not good enough. It's good enough for handwriting, I think, but it's not good enough for drawing, in my opinion. But the definitely the Wacom EMR is better. Um, Huawei is going to release a MatePad with a paperlike screen. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and get onto them as well. When's that? Uh, June the 4th. As I say, you need to kind of, to avoid that palm recognition, like error where you're actually pressing the screen with your palm. You need to make sure that you've got the tip of the pen close enough to the screen before you put your palm down. 
which you know you shouldn't necessarily have to do that but you do so there we are performance wise in terms of the actual processor it isn't going to be that good and i have benchmarked it and it comes out similar performance to the tab Ultra C pro it almost does two words it's just like come on so it comes up kind of like single core 900 like multi-core 2300 and you're talking in the region of like cheap kind of phones really you know even cheapish phones the s20 fe from four years ago is a, a better performance than this so it's not the world's best it's mediatek dimensity is it 7050 i think it is so it's good performance for a kind of inexpensive tablet the matte screen's putting a bit on, but not too much. So I think it's a good compromise, really. And so far, I've kind of enjoyed the screen, certainly. The other thing I would say is, yeah, the, the comparison to a Chromebook. Now, there's an interesting point in tech right now, isn't there? Because we've, we've got, kind of got more operating systems that are viable, more different types, more different categories of tech that have more dissimilarities now, that you've got more, more choice. I think this is kind of one of your choices now. So you've got... You used to have just basically, you could choose a desktop, a laptop, or a tablet, and that was you, and all right, a phone, but a phone really was a phone. And so uh, you needed one of those four things. But now you've got e-ink tablets, you've got different categories of desktop, you know, micro uh, desktops, like in many, many PCs. Um, you've got Android tablets, and you've got Chromebooks as well, which are kind of somewhere in between. And of course, you've got all of the Apple range of things as well, which, uh, which are there kind of categories are, are their own. What I'd say is actually, it's an interesting one. When, when you do put this into desktop mode, you don't have to put the keyboard on to get into this PC mode. And it gives you this kind of DeX-like experience, which I have to say I, I'm quite enjoying, this kind of faux Windows-style desktop. This is now like, you know, very similar to a Chromebook, very, very similar to a Chromebook indeed. And actually you've got a Chrome browser, so you can do all the web 2.0 stuff I've set it to be launched on one of the kind of hotkeys. And look, Apple, in our inexpensive Lenovo, we've already got function keys. We didn't need to sort of add them in as a big special thing. And now I can drag that to one side. I can drag one note to the other side. I think I've got space for four and up to 10 floating windows, I think it was. And actually, you know, it's an interesting thing. Like there's not all that much that a Chromebook is going to necessarily be better for compared to this kind of set up here chromebook with a matte screen maybe who 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 knows i would also love to see the matte glass be an option on more devices and i do think this is good because we've got real clarity in the screen there you can see there's quite a, diff quite a difference in kind of color cast there when i tilt it for you guys in the camera but you still got really nice and clear but just enough you know to take the kind of edge off and to deal with bits of glare there i'm impressed i mean it's you know the screen is doing what it's what it says it's going to do this keyboard is actually one of the better keyboards that I've actually used. And I've actually really thought carefully about what the buttons should do, you know, and that's, so that's a back button rather than an escape key, you know, similar thing. And I was interested by the OLED with the matte glass as well on the uh, new iPads as well, but it's, wow, it's expensive. And obviously a big push to ARM SOCs in the PC world, yep. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be really interesting to see uh, the Snapdragon X Elite in action when that comes along. Lenovo usually makes a great keyboard, yeah they do, and they, they advertise this as a ThinkPad inspired. I was thinking, well if it's ThinkPad inspired guys, give me a little um, pointer and put the, the clicky buttons on here maybe as well. But yeah, it's pretty good. And the nice thing is about OneNote of course is I've got that here on my big computer as well in front of me. Now escape key, it's an interesting one, um, but the the hotkey, and they, they provided in the box for this, the hotkey for escape is press the this little world button and this and it becomes an, an escape essentially. So there is that there is a hotkey for that. Um, so don't panic about not having an escape key. These, these are the shortcuts that are kind of built in. I don't know why the little globe key doesn't also automatically bring up all my apps, but it doesn't, and there is, doesn't seem to be a button for that. They also the other thing I want to talk about briefly is this is a bit annoying actually is this key here is the um, Lenovo freestyle right and it should be now connecting to this point here and what I can do is I can share the screen um, from the desktop to it so I can tell my desktop PC to make this another monitor essentially and yeah that should work really seamlessly but it just doesn't i mean i can try again now now that both had a good reset maybe so i open up freestyle here on my computer there it is in front of me 
it has seen my tablet and I can go extend to and it says extending and then it says connecting to device and it sits like this for a bit and then doesn't do anything. Now the very cheap um, Aldo Cube is actually been sitting there running Space Desk perfectly fine um, and yeah, it, it hasn't managed this to do this once. To do this, this has to be signed in um, in both places on and on the same network. So with Space Desk, you have to be uh, on the same network. Okay, you don't need to be signed in, you just need to be on the same network and you can see anything on there. Okay, fine, that's the way that works through the network. With a lot of other kind of, where you have to log into something, a kind of sharing, screen sharing app, they have to be signed in in two places, but they don't have to be on the same network. Okay, so one or the other. <laughs> but this, you have to have both and it still doesn't work. And you can also stream apps. So on the computer, I've got this option of app streaming and it means that you can actually, it shows you all the apps on here and you can load them up. But I tried a couple and they were just, you know, you, you, they weren't scaled right. They were incredibly pixelated. I couldn't see the kind of top and bottom. It was an absolute mess. So you never know, that might be useful. You can also send files to it really quickly. But of course you can do that already with Google and everything like that. They've valid this thing in here to kind of have their own bespoke bit of um, software, but uh, it just doesn't work. Anyway, um, I like that you can program this to app one and app two, by the way. So app two, I've just made settings. Although well, there is a hotkey for settings, but um, I've just done that for now and just bringing up Chrome and being able to do that with the kind of key there as well. So you know, I'm quite enjoying that. that I think it does depend if the system resources can hack it. There's an interesting point. It does depend if that uh, Dimensity chip is going to manage the kind of workflow that I want it to. And the video output kind of tells me that maybe it won't. There was incidentally, there is a P12 Pro, and this is not that, this is the P12 uh, with matte display. So the P12 Pro does have a chip that allows it to run an external desktop. So you, in other words, you can connect this via the USB P, uh, USB C port and you can make it have a second monitor. This can't do that, which is you know something of a disappointment, but not a deal breaker. It's not an expensive tablet. You know, it's less than 500 quid to get involved with this. The P12 Pro has a Snapdragon 870, which would be their better processor, really. Uh, that would be, um, and that would be able to send out a signal to an external display. But you can use a screen, screen share app, I'm sure, um, and that's what I'm going to have to start doing, I think, if I want to use this to be my sort of PowerPoint machine at school. You can use it as a second monitor, but you can't use it, can't let it drive a second monitor, which is the frustration.